21st at the Globe. It is the fourth free for all. 40 competitors going head to head to head. The winner will find themselves at a title match. You never know who's coming down the ramp next. That's been so great about the free for all. You never know what happens and who's going to win. Riyadi has cleared the table. The Globe Theater downtown Los Angeles. 1 p.m. is the kickoff. Get your tickets at the showdownlive.com. Gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie Trivia Schmodown. Alongside Ken Knapsack, I am Mark Baby Carrot Ellis. And Ken, you know, whether it's a movie Trivia Schmodown competitor or it's a high schooler in the backseat of a car, we advise you to be prepared. However, with this matchup, we don't know how to be prepared because we've never seen these competitors before. You know, Mark, it's always a dream being here. You and I, we've always wanted to be minor league baseball announcers, but That's uh, our we got destiny. this instead. You're looking live at Riverfront Stadium. Tom Seaver throwing for the Reds today. Uh, happy to be here with you, but uh, this is, I don't know what to say about this match. we got two competitors coming in here. New season, new names. That's what Season 7 is all about here. The new era at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Seven years. Gosh, I was just 71 when this started, but we're so excited to have new, new competitors uh, bringing in uh, unknown, uh, unknown like factors. I feel like a vampire because I'm salivating at the, at the, the thought of new blood. Now, now, one competitor you and I both know well. It's our Good friend, uh, Clee. Oh. Uh, follow her on her social media at Clee the Pimp. Yep. It is Clee the Pimp. Wiggins is going to be taking on a barbarian. Yeah, yeah. Not, I'm, I'm sorry, the barbarian. Yeah, not one half of the legendary WWF tag team Powers of Pain. This is the barbarian here, part of the Finstock Exchange, and that is uh, that is that itself brings in an added factor. If you got Bobby Gucci in your side, that means one of two things. One, you probably got some stolen goods in your car you don't know about. And two, uh, he brings that kind of chaotic edge to the match. He brings that panache. But then on the other side of the ledger, you look at Clea the Pimp Wigan. She is represented by the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney. She's in that faction. So this is as much corruption and then the Finstock Exchange feeling out their new team members. In another life, I was part of corruption, and I do miss those days. I understand that change happens. Uh, I once had hair down on my neck. Now you could land a helicopter right on top of my head from space. But... Um, I have the pictures. Here is the thing. Uh, Shannon came into corruption, and she could not be contained on the sidelines. She is passionate about the Schmodown. She's knowledgeable about the Schmodown. Anything that Mike Kalinowski got, Shannon probably helped him get, and now she's here to lead corruption. And I got to tell you, I'll put the past behind me as a, as a broadcast journalist here and saying I'm excited to see what she can do with corruption. What a professional you have become. Let's see how the newbies are on the mic with their pre-show interview. Let's see what they had to say. I'm Craig. I'm the Barbarian. Hey, come on. I want you to draft me. I'm going to be in the draft next year. Are you really? You got to yeah, you got to draft me. Really? The exchange needs an action hero. I'm going to go with the Barbarian. <laughs> Well, 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 here we are. Season seven, chock full of rookies and chock full of veterans. We here at the Finstock Exchange have a couple of newcomers, one being the man right next to me. This barbarian guy, um, I've heard some pretty good things about him. He could be another strong, strong player. Now we're playing uh, Wiggins. Her first name escapes me. Klee. Klee. Like, like K-L-E-E -E or? I was told there'd be no spelling. Okay, oh yeah, cool. Listen, the queen is in, again. And if there's one thing that you already know about corruption, is that we bounce back. We don't quit, we don't stop, we take our losses in stride, and we move on. We got a lock on IG, we got a lock on teams. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Clee Wiggins to lock us down in singles. I just, I mean, I don't like to brag, but. Please do. I'm amazing. <laughs> She's in trouble, and she's managed by corruption, they had a terrible draft. They were also told there'd be no spelling. Yeah, that's true too. I think you think what you think I know, but you don't actually know. And we have a little message um, for the Barbarian. I've got a Savage on my team, okay? Bottom line is she's gonna make you look civilized after this. What happens is a lot of people think they're really good until we come in 
and prove they're not. Hence the Truth Serum, the Finstock Exchange, aka the Truth Serum Deliverers. Good luck. Bye. Ken, I'm getting the vibe of confidence from the, both the Barbarian and Clee the Pimp. I think that they maybe haven't been in this situation before, but they know the game. They've studied. They've watched old matches, and they're ready to let their moment shine. Do you have any sense as to what they're good at? Yeah, I did speak to them before, and yeah, they're, both of them, I'll say this, both of them are pretty confident. They're, they're, they're new to this, but they've studied this. Kind of like me, my first trip to the Sizzler All-You-Can-Eat Salad Bar. I watched for about a month before I went in first. That's smart. And you, you kind of know your way around, but I asked Barbarian, I said, what are your strengths? He said, my right bicep, my left bicep, also Oscar movies. So we're going to probably have a push-up contest later. Clee, the pimp Wiggins, she just, with quiet confidence that sci-fi, rom-coms, 80s, 90s, two of my favorite decades, so she brings those strengths to the showdown. You mean if you're not a competitor screaming into the mic, are you even in the showdown? We're about to find out. Ken, you ready to get going here? I am ready, sir. Then let's get ready to showdown. <laughs> and now I turn it over to the golden throat, the man who will tell you get a free egg at Sammy's around the corner from the ballpark, Ken Knapsack for the introduction. Intro, juicing first. Representing corruption. With a record of zero wins and zero defeats, making her debut in the movie Trivia Showdown Singles Division. Accompanied to the arena by her manager, the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney, this is Clee the Pig. Wiggins! Shannon Barney encouraging the crowd to bow down. Look at the crowd this. has a conundrum. I think they want to boo Shannon, but they want to cheer Klee, so I it's a little so. bit of a I think mixed so. bag. Uh, Klee walking out again with that, with that confidence. I like that glass of champagne, too. She's uh, got a Star Wars shirt on. She is ready to go here. And I could probably uh, start sipping on some of that sauce myself. Absolutely. I've been doing that since 10 a.m. yesterday. And her opponent, also making his debut in the movie Trivia Schmodown Singles Division, representing the Finstock Exchange and being accompanied to the arena by his manager, Bobby Gucci. Here is the Barbarian! And uh, no surprise here. Maybe Dagnino dressed more like the Barbarian as he has no shirt under that yeah. windbreaker <laughs> jogger. There's the there, Barbarian. Look at hair. that kind of hair. Beautiful hair. That's the kind of hair I had when I was a rock DJ in the 90s. So I, I respect Freddy him Fables. right away. The Barbarian, it appears <laughs> to have killed a small woodland creature yeah. on his way into the studio. From this angle, it looked like Sweetums from the Muppet movie, chasing them down the street, yeah. going to Hollywood. Oh, his right. name is Elvis, and I didn't kill him. Oh, whoa. He okay. did not. Uh, so kill Elvis him. still alive after all these years. Kill him. All right, both competitors okay, out on the table, Mr. Ellis. <laughs> All right, as the managers go to their respective corners, it is now up to me to read the rules of round number one to these new competitors. Round number one, the field will hear eight questions from eight different categories of movie trivia schmodown know-how. Each question is worth but a point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask a question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you by name or nickname to reveal your answer, please show what you wrote on the whiteboard to the camera. At the same time, you verbalize your answer into the microphone. Each competitor has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question correct, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be issued by your manager should you not like the way a question was ruled. All right, uh, Barbarian, um, are you and I, I'm going to just say Elvis uh, prepared for the match? Elvis and I are always ready to rock. Okay, very well spoken for a Barbarian. Elvis. Oh, Right. And uh, Clee the Pimp Wiggins, you ready yes. to go here? Yes. All yeah, right, then, ready. Ken, I think it's my turn to say it's time to schmodown. <laughs> time for the movie trivia schmodown, and as we kick off uh, with question number one, that is going to be in the world of action adventure movies. 
And your question is, what film in the Mission Impossible franchise was directed by Pixar filmmaker Brad Bird? We need the actual subtitle Sub of the movie. Oh, uh, you know, that could... Not the number of the film. There's yeah. been a lot of these. There's been Mission colon Impossible pictures. Right. Five, four, three, J uh, two. Mission, uh, JTE. Okay, I can that? repeat. We'll repeat that, the question. We'll count, the question. That. we'll count that. What film in the Mission Impossible franchise was directed by Pixar filmmaker Brad Bird? Uh, could be, you know, you don't be shy with those JT rules, is yeah. what I always say. Use Barbarian is petting Elvis heavily. Um, oh, that's, and I find that's it off Elvis. I didn't Five, know who Elvis was. Four, three, two, and one. Pens are down. Looking for answers, starting with Barbarian. Ghost, ghost Protocol. That is correct. Cleet. Oh, well, I said Ghost Protocol. All that right, there is it is. Great. <laughs> Please on the board. She even wrote down Mission Impossible to remind us about the question. Thank you for that, Clee. As we move on to the world of new releases, Ken, what do we got? That's right. Second question comes in the category of new releases. New releases. Will Smith plays an assassin and his clone in what 2019 thriller? Is there anyone you'd rather hang out with more than Will Smith? Can you name five people you'd rather spend an afternoon with? It, it, uh, he'd be three, DJ Jazzy Jeff probably two, and then <laughs> Uncle Phil on there as well. No Jeffrey the Butler love. Mm, Interesting. Maybe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Pens are down. Look for answers starting with Klee. Uh, Gemini, man. That is Nailed correct. It. And the Barbarian. And we got Ang Lee's Gemini, Gemini man. All right. <laughs> two, well done. To two. Klee looking good. Barbarian looking good. All right. Two to two so far. We move on to the category of dramas. And your question, who stars as Dick Cheney in the 2018 film Vice? Uh, Dick Cheney, of course, mm -hmm. shot a man in the face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and Went hutting and And that was when politics right were good. Five, <laughs> four, three, I long for the innocent two, days of hunting accidents. One. Enter down, barbarian. Look for answers. The American psycho Christian Bale. This is yeah. true, Clink. UK's Batman, Christian Bale. There yeah. it is. Uh, on it, look at this. Three to three. I like this rivalry between the Barbarian and Klee with different monikers and references for each correct it's, answer they've had. It's like we're so learning here. It's like VH1's pop-up video, but with the trivia questions. I love that show. All right. Boop. Category number four. Boop. Question four is animated. Animated films. These are films as animated as Mark's jacket. What is the name? What is the name of Gaston's short-statured sidekick in Beauty and the Beast? So long story boring, how did I get this jacket? Mm. Uh, one Joshua Hercules Makuga, who you can catch on the History Channel. That's right, hashtag eating history. Five, four, three, two. Shout out to Smokey. And one, pens are down, looking for answers, starting with Klee. I know I'm wrong, but I guessed. That is incorrect, <laughs> Barbarian. Well, it's, you said that because he played Olaf. Yeah, that's what I was His thinking. His name is LeFou. Oh, that is correct. That is correct. It something European. It is LeFou. Le that is European. The thing that's all that, whatever. Who cares? All right. Four to three, four to three, but Klee's still very much in this game. Uh, the Barbarian perfect through round number one's halfway point as we move on to your next category, which is fantasy slash science fiction. And the question, who plays teenager Kim Boggs? in the film Edward Scissorhands. Wade Boggs, no 3,000 hit, Wade was a home Boggs. run uh, for the Tampa Bay Devil Race. You know uh, he, he ate 26 he pieces of chicken before every game. Rode off on a horse at Yankee Stadium. Five, An actual live horse. Four, three, would a barbarian two, ride on a horse. And one. Pens it down. Look for answers starting with the barbarian. The greatest person to ever watch a SAG award speech, Winona Ryder. All right. That is correct. That's correct. Clay Wiggins. Why no forever when I know the <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Says the young lady with a glass of champagne. Oh, I love that. Okay, so it is now five to four. And, Ken, you, we didn't know a lot about these competitors going in. Now I think I can go ahead and proclaim they know a lot about a variety they of categories. Two close game, five, four, going into question six here. Comes in the category of comedies. <laughs> I think they laugh harder when I do it. Yeah, that's what they laugh harder. That's what they all say, Mark. Uh, <laughs> funny. All right. You learn something new. Question every day. number six in the category of comedies: Which actress swaps bodies with Lindsay Lohan in 2003's Freaky Friday? 
It's um, an oddly worded question, isn't it? Uh, you ever watch that Lindsay Lohan Beach Club and Mykonos show? I watched every episode twice. Good Lord. <laughs> um, no, but I did see from um, Five, Kelly to four, Justin, the American three, Idol film. Two, not as good. One, pens are down. We are looking for answers starting with Clee. Oh, uh... Jamie Lee Curtis. She once yelled at me in an elevator at Comic Con. That's true. Barbarian, yes. Jamie Lee Curtis. Very true. 6 5. Wow. All right. Well, don't everybody. But she was joking. Turns out we had a great exchange. Everyone watching at home, I'm going to quickly ask the next question, then get 15 seconds more of this story. Your penultimate question in round number one comes from the world of horror slash thriller movies. And your query is Who stars as Nick Dunn in the David Fincher thriller Gone Girl? All right, so you and Jamie Lee Curtis, she gets it. what's she the was, hotel? She was carrying uh, the Andes. She was carrying her, her high heels. I said, ah, beauty is pain. She says, that's what a stupid man would say. Ah. It was a great exchange. Then we laughed at it. Had a good time. Okay. Five. Are you sure you both Four. laughed at it? Three. Okay. Two. One. Pens are down. Looking for answers starting with the barbarian. America's Batman. Ben Affleck. <laughs> that's right. Clee Wiggins. Boston's greatest bad boy, Ben Affleck. That's All right. right. I got a 7 6 game. 7 6 game. I like Barbarian. The, the crowd showing their applause for both competitors yeah. here. Good match. Good match. Barbarian potentially perfect in Could round have one. a perfect game. Eighth and final question, potentially. Category is 90s movies. 90s movies. Who plays crop duster pilot Russell Case in Independence Day? Uh, uh, do you think the term crop dusting in 2020 is known more for farming or for uh, tooting? According to my dad, it's all about the toots. Okay. Your dad, who is a fan of Jack in the Box. And crop dusting. Five, four. One usually three, begets the other. Two, one. Pens down, looking for answers. Starting with Clee. Oh. My favorite conspiracy theorist, Randy Quaid. That's yes. <laughs> right. An American treasure. Did barbarian. Elvis or the Barbarian have it? For a perfect round. It was round. also Elvis's favorite conspiracy theorist, Randy Quaid. We got a perfect round. Wow. No conspiracy here, Mark. We got a perfect round for the Barbarian. So, uh, Clee Wiggins with, with a great rookie showing seven points yep. in round number one. And the Barbarian, a perfect round. So, a question will be asked just to Barbarian. You don't need to write this one down. You can just answer at your ready within 15 seconds. This bonus question. For a two-point lead over Cleet Wiggins going into round number two, which actor co-stars with Kate Beckinsale as the lead of 2001's Serendipity? This is great. Beckinsale actually getting... John younger. Cusack. That is Ooh, correct. Elvis it. had it. Whispered it into the Barbarian's ear. Yep. And we go nine to nine seven, seven with a perfect round for the Barbarian. Whew, anything's going to happen in round number two, Ken. Absolutely. Wheel round. We got a uh, Spillown Patreon sponsorship coming in. This is uh, where it gets really interesting here in round number two. These are always fun. So round number two is known as the wheel round. And on the wheel, so graciously uh, provided by Alex Marzonia, uh, Tom Hanks is a sponsored wheel slice by one of our many great patrons. Thanks to all of our movie trivia Schmodown patrons. If someone spins the Tom Hanks slice, we will say the name of that mystery sponsor. So as we look at the landscape of this match, the Barbarian in control with a two-point lead. Uh, sir, would you like to spin first or defer to Clee the Pimp Wiggins? I will spin first. Here All comes right. the Barbarian with the spin. Going to put the pressure on. That's I asked the Finstock exchange brokers how I should spin the wheel. They voted and said, like a discus at the Olympics. Okay. Oh. Uh, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't realize that we called the Finstock Exchange yeah. members brokers. Yeah, it's true. Um, and an action stronger than words. Let's get to it. Tell me what happens with your money when you yeah. invest the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you just there you go. All right, there All you right. go. It doesn't have to be a hard spin. Just uh, just, just uh, something. That's to get a good us spin. Going that's here. good spin. What a dainty touch by the barbarian. Spin is in. Spin is uh, in. Can I spy some new wheel slices on there, including Eddie Murphy? Really. And the Barbarian oh, spins another new slice of Coen Brothers. Do you want to Coen keep it? Coen Brothers. We're going to need an answer. He He's is going to keep, keep the Coen Brothers. The Coen Brothers, and as the Barbarian returns to his chair, I'll remind each competitor that in round two, you're going to hear four questions from each category. Uh, questions worth two points. If you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. Keep in mind, stealing is available in round number two. All right, Barbarian, you selected a Coen Brothers smattering of films, and I'm going to provide that for you right now. 
for two points. Your first question, the wild, wacky, wonderful world of the Coens is... Who plays Maud Lebowski in The Big Lebowski? Five. Four. Julianne Moore. Two points. Two points there. 11 7 lead. All right, your next question. What Coen Brothers film focuses on the character Larry Gobnick? a college professor whose life unravels during the 1960s. I think he took a bite out of the animal. Best Picture nominee, A Serious Man. He got two more points for that one, and he's perfect in round number two as well. All right, Barbarian slash Elvis, your next question, your penultimate one in round number two. In the film Raising Arizona, Nicolas Cage's character steals what brand of diaper from a liquor store? Huggies. Uh, seemed to be some disagreement with yep. him and Elvis, but he did get Got Huggies it. correct. <laughs> All right, one more question in the world of the Coen brothers for a perfect round number two. In the film No Country for Old Men, Josh Brolin's character finds a satchel which holds how much money after stumbling onto a drug deal gone wrong? Five, four. Multiple choice. Is it A, $500,000, B, $1 million, C, $2 million, or D, $5 million? C. $2 million is correct, and that is another correct answer for the Barbarian. He only had to check the multiple choice once. He got all four questions correct in some yep. form or another, and that is a daunting task for Klee Wiggins to now step up to the wheel and have a spin. So here comes Klee, and this is... It uh, doesn't come off. It's going to have to be a <laughs> nice sportsmanship there by the Barbarian. The wheel does yep. stay on. Klee's uh, wearing my old Han Solo leggings. I do like those. It's a yeah. Star Wars kind of day here at the it studio. Is. It is. And as it spins around, it could be the Cohen Brothers. Cohen so we Brothers. will just respin. You should take that. It's a good one. Yeah, you just get a free respin as Tom Dagnino crosses. Crossing. All right, Light and round spin. and round it goes. It looks like it's Drew Barrymore, Barrymore films. She is going right. to. You do have a mulligan if you'd like to spin again. Mm. Clee Wiggins born on the same date as Drew Barrymore. She's going to go again. The spin is in. The rotations count. There's her spin. We've got some. Oh, almost. Would have, uh, it is Oscar the films. Oscars. All right, all right. And Oscar is about to ask Clee Wiggins four questions about his ceremony. That's right. And this is what the wheel round is. Do you go for what you think you might know or take a risk for the second spin? We'll see if it pays off for Clee. The pimp, four questions in the category of Oscars, Clee. You do have multiple choice and two JTs remaining. First question, Nicolas Cage has won his only Oscar for which film? Leaving Las Vegas. That's a two-point answer there for Clee. It's a darn good Sheryl Crow tune as well. Leaving Las Vegas. Second question. Michael Keaton received his only Oscar nomination for what film? Birdman. Two more points. Clee's on fire. We're going so fast I forgot to remind folks that I'll be leaving Las Vegas March 8th because I'm performing there March 6th. Hey, that's can I come? Sure. All right. Third question out of four here. Who won an Academy Award for playing Edwin Hoover in Little Miss Sunshine? Alan Arkin. Two more points for Clee. She knows her stuff. All right. All right. We're going to say your fourth and final question will be this. What was the first musical to win Best Picture? Ooh. Multiple choice. A, An American in Paris. B, The Broadway Melody. C, Gigi. D, West Side Story. West Side Story. Incorrect. The Broadway Melody. That's a steal wow. for the Barbarian. Wow. 
He and didn't even need the right? options again. That's he a huge steal. Klee having a great round until that last stumble, but yep. she remains competitive with the Barbarian. It's only four points separating them going into round number three. The Barbarian, I'm not sure you can throw a question at him that he doesn't know, and Klee hanging right there almost stride for stride. I'll tell you what, she's shown a, a lot of skill here in her first match, but so does the Barbarian if we go into the decisive third round. Maybe uh, Klee should have brought her pet badger to whisper answers into her ear. I don't steal fur from my grandmother. It is a chinchilla, <laughs> and this was a gift. <laughs> we don't have a ruling on whether it's actually from one of his other family members. So we will move on to round number three. In round number three, each competitor is going to give us a series of three numbers. These numbers can range from 1 to 20. Each number you give us corresponds to a different category of movie trivia schmodown know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. No stealing, no multiple choice in round number three. So because Eddie and Barbarian have the lead, they're going to give us their Elvis. three numbers first. <laughs> what do you want to call him, Eddie? All right. Well, he's probably not real anyway. Um, <laughs> your three numbers are? I'm sorry. Eddie's Elvis is very real. I'll go with 17 for my current score. I will go with 1982 for the year Conan the Barbarian came out. Okay, that's that 19. No, no, 1982. Okay, we, we, the numbers have to range from 1 to 20. They can't be dates that you're a fan of. Two. That'll work. And one more number. 2011, or just 11, I guess. We can just do for 11. The year, the year, for the year that crap fest that uh, remake two. came out. 17, right. 2, and 11. 17, 2, and 11. Uh, Klee. Uh, three. Eighteen and six. Three, eighteen, and okay. six it is. Okay. All right, Clee, I'll be asking you your questions. Ken will be administering to the barbarian and his pet. Um, Clee, you selected number three for your round three two-point question. And <laughs> what do you know? That corresponds to Oscar movies. Hey, look at that. And your question for two points. What best picture winning film was directed by Guillermo del Toro. Five, four, three. JTE, uh, more okay. time. Repeat um, the question. How does it go? You just use the JTE rule. I'll repeat the question another 15 seconds. What best picture winning film was directed by Guillermo del Toro? Pan's Labyrinth. Looking for the shape of water. The shape of water. I don't water. think so, but thank you. Uh, very nice of you to offer your dead rodent to Klee, but as we move on to uh, Klee's next question, we're going to stick with Klee here for three points, and this could pull her to within one of the Barbarian's score. Klee, you selected number 18, mm -hmm. and that corresponds to biopics. Okay. And your question is... Name two, just two, of the actors portraying the members of NWA in the film Straight Outta Compton. O'Shea Jackson Jr. and... Five, four, three, two... I'm a bad black person. I didn't one. see that movie. <laughs> and that's going to be it. Sorry, you did get O'Shea Jackson Jr. We also needed Corey Hawkins, Jason Mitchell, Aldis Dodge, or Neil Brown Jr. to right. round out. I knew out. it was another junior in there. Comes um, down to this here. Comes down there to this was here, Mark. One more junior in there. TKO. So now can we finally find ourselves at a potential TKO spot? Because Klee, yeah. uh, if she gets this five-point question right, she's actually going to have a lead on the Barbarian right. and force him to answer questions in round number three. If she misses it, the win goes to the Barbarian and Edgar. Uh, so we go to number six. <laughs> Klee, yes. you selected number six for your five-point question. Yes, I did. Let's give you the lead if you get it right. Okay. And it's in the category of new releases. Okay. And your question. Five points. Which actress plays Alita in the 2019 film Alita Battle Angel? You asked me who works a McDonald's drive through Let's see. <laughs> Five. Four. Is there a multiple three, choice in this round? There's no multiple two, choice. You have one JDE rule one. remaining. 
That's it. And, and it's your it. winner by way of technical knockout, the Barbarian. Rosa Salazar. Rosa Salazar. Rosa Salazar well, was the answer we were looking for. You, there. you might, yeah, you, you, you know, good show on for Clea until that last round, but I think, uh, you know, good enough showing in the their first game. It's tough. And the crowd here is just kind of stunned as to what they just witnessed. They, yeah. they, they uh, it, it, it appeared to be some sort of go for answering most of the questions correct. Yeah. The Barbarian comes out on top. Uh, Clee Wiggins, a, a nice rookie showing for her, but the Barbarian clearly a force to be reckoned with going forward here in the movie. Yeah. Trivia Schmodon, Ken, he didn't miss a question. He did not miss a question. He didn't get his last three. He didn't need them, but he did not miss a question. Did take some uh, multiple choice around two, but that's always a smart play sometimes. So perfect so far. That's a pretty, pretty good way to start. And he knows how to play the game. He got a nice steal there. And like you yeah. said, for Clee Wiggins, uh, great round number one, great round number two, and then just got the wrong questions at yep. the wrong time for round number three, resulting in a TKO for the Barbarian. Yep. Um, your thoughts on the Barbarian moving forward? I think he might be somebody to be feared in the league. He might be feared, uh, maybe because of rabies. Uh, maybe I was because say of his outside knowledge. of the desk. Yeah, uh, but I'll tell you what, with Finstock, Bobby Gucci, Tom in his corner, whatever it may be that day, that hour, uh, I think he could be a real a formidable uh, contender here in the movie trivia showdown. And now we're going to have an interview with both the winner and the loser of today's match with the great Jen Sturger. Jen, it's all yours. Thanks so much, guys. I'm backstage with Finstock and, of course, the Barbarian. Finstock, you've got to be feeling pretty good about this new recruit. I know Christian was really, really hot on this guy going into the draft, and I guess you must have seen something in him that was like, this might be my new guy. First of all, I see everything. Uh, second of all, you know, it goes to show that uh, great nicknames don't win uh, ball games. Uh, Cleet a pimp, played really well. Um, but this guy over here is the best, okay? He's the best rookie to come out of the stable. When he fell into my lap in the seventh round, I, I was like, what dummies other managers are. I know what you're probably thinking. Where did I get this Atlanta hat? That's not at all what I said. I wasn't thinking that at all. But I got it from the Paul Walker, uh, no, Paul Wallace Hauser. That was an unfortunate slip up. Yeah, bad one. <laughs> anyway, that being said, uh, look, you, see what, you saw what he did here today. We knew what this guy was. And to answer your question, yes, everybody was high on him. I couldn't believe he fell that, that far. When that dope Robert Meyer Burnett drafted the wa war father, I mistake mistakenly thought it was him, which would have been a real issue. And uh, I would have traded for him and got him before, uh, you know, he obviously, obviously played a game. But um, look, this is just another guy in the Finstock exchange. I mean, we got the top four guys in the league as it is. This guy might be, this guy be, might be number five. We'll see. To be able to come out of the block, though, and to have your first game with zero misses, I mean, that's got to give you some confidence moving forward. You know, all the confidence I need in this world I get from two people, Elvis and this man right here, Tom Dagnino. I don't know which part of that equation is stranger at this point. <laughs> when I first showed up at the Schmo Down to introduce myself, I met several managers. Most of them blew me off, didn't take a second to talk to me. But this man right here, Tom Dagnino, he saw, he saw what I had. He told me, I'm going to draft you, and he did. And now, the Finstock Exchange, the rich got richer, greed is great. So do you bathe that or, you know? How dare you ask that? It's just curious. I couldn't tell if it was it or Finstock. Anyways, congratulations, guys, on your first victory in the league. I'm definitely not the last. And I cannot wait to see this new crop of competitors that we have coming up in this league, because I think there's going to be a lot of surprises for all of us. Anyways, back to the desk. All right, Jen, thanks for asking that question about bathing Elvis. I have the same query myself. Ken, maybe we'll figure it out in a future match down the road, but it looks like the Finstock Exchange is just getting started for this young season. A great start to 2020. Tom does his due diligence and research, or he just has uh, people giving him information for money. I don't know. Uh, either way, it works. Uh, more the latter. Uh, yeah. yeah, more the latter. But uh, uh, you know, Barbarian, again, perfect. Didn't miss. You can't say enough about that. He might have a collection of dead ferrets in his Camry, but uh, who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't, indeed. We have another new potential star that was on the losing end of the ledger here today, representing corruption alongside the queen of corruption, Shannon Barney, Clee Wiggins, joined now by our own Jen Sturger. Jen, what's the mood over there? You know what? The mood, when
when Shannon Barney is around is always still elevated. It all is still very encouraging despite having lost because Clee, that was a pretty great performance considering that was your first time out of the gate. And I was just wondering, did the lights get to you? Was it just kind of learning the whole ropes of the game? No, that's not any of it. Was um, it the bubbly in your hand? <laughs> no, I drink all day, all the time. Um, it was literally like the stuff I didn't know, I just didn't know. Like, I feel like the Barbarian didn't win, I lost. Because the stuff I didn't know, I just didn't know. I knew, like, the water, like, the Guillermo del Toro question. I knew it was some water. I, something about water. A fish to dude. But, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to say that. A fish we'll bleep it in post. has relations with a human lady. It was consensual. Yes, consensual relations. But I couldn't remember, and I couldn't just say, like, something about water. So I said the other movie that I thought he might have won for, which was Pan's Labyrinth. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. But it is not the lights. I'm, I'm a G. I love it. I'm a G. I'm a G. Now, I saw you spun away from Drew Barrymore. Do you regret that at all? No, I think I would have done the same. I, I, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Did today show you any kind of like game gamesmanship things that you could improve on as far as like, you know, learning the, the rules of the game? I saw you kind of go, do I get multiple choice on this? Do I not? Does that kind of stuff play into that? Like, is that something that you guys are going to work on going forward, Janet? We're absolutely going to work on it. We have tons of stuff to work on. There's always room for improvement. Um, we went over everything, but yeah, it's your first game. First game right out the bat. And by the way, she stepped up to the plate because the people that were supposed to play didn't show up to do their job. But Clee, the pimp Wiggins, showed up to do the job. I was here to observe camera ready. Wow. That's super impressive when you know that absolutely. kind of stuff. <laughs> Way to throw everyone under the bus, too, while you're at it, Shannon. <laughs> Anyways. Clee, this is nothing to hang your head about. Today was an absolutely great performance, and I am really excited for you, Shannon, because despite having kind of a disadvantage in the draft, you seem to have found some real diamond in the roughs. That's my specialty. How do you think I got this crown? <laughs> it's not an accident, people. You heard it here first, guys. Back to the desk. Uh, Ken, can we fact check? Is that crown actually made out of diamonds? Uh, it, it absolutely is. Uh, it, it, Shannon spares no exp exp expense. Look, uh, corruption's off to a, you know a little bit of a rocky start here in 2020. Fair. Whatever. I'm not over there. I don't know what's going on in those clubhouse meetings. You but, used to be. But uh, it used to be. It used to be. But I'll tell you what. I'm, I am a fan of Clee Wiggins uh, outside the Schmodown. I think she's great, and I think she'll find her footing here. Uh, you know, j tossed in here into the fire, and she did not come out burnt, as far as I'm concerned. She came out experienced, and that's going to help. Yeah, you know, as an impartial party here, I would look at corruption. I would say, yeah, you had a, a few missteps early in the season so far, but don't stop what you're doing. Don't don't stop drinking the champagne. Continue on this road because I think eventually corruption will find themselves who they are, how to answer questions when the white hot spotlight is on. They need it the most. They're going to be just fine. And the Finstock Exchange, like we said, may be shifting into fifth gear here with the addition of the Barbarian. Quite a new party to this movie trivia showdown, new era. That's right. I, you know, Tom's. Bobby Gucci, whatever, interesting character. I, I, he knows what he's doing, and he's off to a great start. And we uh, thank everybody for watching not only this episode, but being such great supporters of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Whether you tell your aunt, your uncle, your dead ferret about the Movie Trivia Schmodown, or you join our Patreon. Check it out today and select which tier is right for you. That is Ken, why we love Star Wars Knapsack. He's an author. In addition to being America's foremost foot model, I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, and we'll see you real soon at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Woo!